Hello, my name is Westbam and let's do another tutorial about spreads and slices. Like I showed in the previous tutorial, if you connect two spreads to one node, the spread that will output will have the same slice count as the highest slice count you used. So in this case, the highest slice count is five slices. To match the slice count of the other spread, VVV internally repeats the slices in the other spread until they equal the slice count of the other spread. This behavior applies to most things inside VVV, not only for values. Let me quickly put some quads on the screen for you. I select this, hit the delete key, I'm gonna make a renderer, a transform, and a quad, and a circular spread. I have done this many times, so if I go a bit too fast, press pause after each step. Okay, let's put the renderer over here. And let's line this up. Okay, let's uh, increase the spread count for the circular spread. I put it to six. And now I got six overlapping quads, so let me scale it down a bit. Zero is a bit too small. Yeah, point two can be nice. Okay, let's color these babies. I make an RGB color join. RGB color join and I connect it to the quad. I already explained colors in tutorial 19 and in tutorial 20, so I will not bother again. But now it's white because I used all the red, all the green and all the blue. So when I remove some green, I should end up with a nice purple color. Now I have one color for six quads, so all my quads are purple. So let's make two colors. I make an IO box value advanced. Double right click, move my mouse away. I put the slice count mode to calls rows pages. And I make it two rows, make it a bit bigger. And I connect it to the red pin of the RGB node. And now they are both the same, so let me change one value. And now I made two colors, purple and blue. Because I sent two colors to six quads, I get this result because it gets repeated. So I got purple, blue, purple, blue, purple, blue, purple, blue. Now let's pretend I want to have three purple quads and three blue quads, all in a row. To do that, I need to create a spread with six colors. And now I only got two colors, you see, output, two. I could either make the IO box value advanced, six values and fix it by hand, or I could fix the color spread itself. For now, let's focus on these values. We're going to create a new node. The new node is called resample spreads. This node will use a spread as input, and it then outputs a spread with a fixed amount of slices. So I want to have six slices as output, so I put the spread count to six. Well, as you can see, nothing really happened. Well, that's because the resample mode is set on repeat. And that's the default mode. So now it will repeat the input spread until it ends up with six slices. And that was just like it was in the old situation. For normal use, you should know two modes. That's the mode repeat. Let me right click. And the mode point. Now if I select the node point, I will get six slices and they are grouped together. So with mode set to point, the input spread will be repeated in the way we wanted it. You can also check out some other modes. The resample node is pretty powerful. It can do interpolation like linear and it can do some other tricks. Okay, let's put the mode back to point again. I will go for 50 to get this nice design. The reason the colors are all mixed up again is because we only have six slices to color all the 50 quads. Now to fix this, we can set the resample node back to 50. I could also make an IO box value advanced, double right click, move your mouse away and connect it to both the spread count of the resample node and the spread count of the circular spread node and then set them both to 50. But let's say that the transform node gets its value from many spread generators, not just the circular spreads. So for example, I create a random spread. And a linear spread to the translate x and a random spread for the size, and I increase some random spread counts, tweak some values, 
And now we get this cool looking thing. Okay, again, I want one side blue and one side purple. So I want to know how many quads I get. And the amount of quads is dictated by the amount of transforms. And the transforms is dictated by the highest spread count of these three shape generators. So to figure out how many times we need to resample the color, we're going to count the transforms. We're going to use the count node. And when you make a count node, you can pick between value, ex, string, color, enumerations, and node. Now, I know for sure it's not a value, it's not a mesh, it's not a string, it's not a color, and it's not an enumeration. So that leaves me with node. The node group can be many things, from transforms to textures to whatever. But for now, we pick count node. I connect it to the transform. And when I hover above the count pin, I get 155. So I know I have 155 transforms. And if I hover above the spread count pins of my spread generators, indeed, I can see that the linear spread is set to 155. So now I want to resample my colors to 155 slices. And here we are. Everything is perfectly like I wanted it. Let me clean this up. Okay, I know this was a pretty long story for just two notes for count and resample. But mastering these two notes is very important to make your life a bit more easy when working with spreads. Okay, the result of the patch now looks okay, but that's only because I used the linear spread for the x-axis, and that was the highest value. If, for example, I make another random spread and would connect that to the translate x-pin and use a different seed and then use a different random value, you would see we get this mess. Now, in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how we can fix this mess. So we got the left side uh, purple and the right side blue again. Okay, that's it for now, and thanks for watching.